What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another movie reaction. This time, I'm diving into the third movie, guys. Death Wish 3 from 1985. I'm so excited. I can finally watch this one sooner than later. I saw Death Wish 2 just about a month ago, so make sure to click on that reaction. I'll leave it down in the description below, guys. And it's also awesome that they can follow up on this sequel just a couple of years off the last one. They didn't wait 10 years like they did pretty much with the first movie. And from what I've been hearing guys this third one is a lot of people's favorites and that makes me extremely happy because usually sequels are not the greatest i had a great time with part two i mean it's very very grim subject nature but i want to see how crazy paul kersey can get with these thugs in this third film so enough talking let's get to watching but before we do if you guys want to show love and support the channel always make sure to hit that big thumbs up and consider subscribing today for more reactions like this movie reviews and live streams here on the channel also if you guys are watching this reaction on youtube and want to watch the full uncensored cut make sure to click on my patreon link down in the description below where you guys can join today for a seven day free trial and pick the movies that i watch next all right folks talkers so without further ado my first time watching 1985's death wish 3. <laughs> Is he traveling to another damn city? <laughs> New York, Chicago, LA. Now we're back to another city on the East Coast, it looks like. Dash Wish 3, y'all. That's right. Get funky. Get groovy. Yeah. We back. We killing thugs. Yeah. <laughs> It always trips me out when action movies play music like this. It never fits. It never works, y'all. It's so weird and out of place. Oh, we're back in New York. I see the Twin Towers. Wow. Good thing I wore the perfect hat, man. Oh, we're getting right into it. Oh, Alex Winter, man. God, they make New York such an ugly place in the 80s, man. There was literally some woman getting harassed in the back right there at the, at the airport. Like, no one's doing anything. Isn't that crazy, y'all, that we've been in that situation or something similar, and it really takes a strong person to call someone for help to help someone out in need. You don't know what's going on behind these walls, guys. You really don't. So if you guys see something, really say something. I know it's a movie, but we got to get serious with shit like this. Charlie? Take care of my things, will you, till I get back? Moving your dead asshole. He's dead. The son of a bitch killed him. What? Move it. Oh, that's how they want to play Death Wish 3, huh? From my guy Paul? Never. No, no, no. Y'all don't know who you're messing with. <coughs> Who's this dude? Mr. Kimball here doesn't want to talk. Kimball, is it? I'll be a son of a bitch. Kersey. It's Paul Kersey. You see, I was with the New York PD the night they brought a vigilante in. With a bullet in his leg? Been ten years. Last damn thing I need is a vigilante. Maybe I should have you killed. You always violate people's constitutional rights. And I'm the law. That means I get to violate your constitutional rights. Damn. Oh, here we go. Come on, tough guy. Fresh off the bus, fresh in jail. <laughs> oh, man. They put him in there with some bad dudes. Get in there. Think this uh, jail is a little overcrowded, sir? I tore it out. 
Oh! <laughs> Yo, his head went all the way through. That's gonna be our villain or what? You turned pro after LA. Six creeps shot in 36 hours. Then four gang members in Kansas City, two mugger rapists in Chicago. You went out of here, you got it. I'll minimize the vigilante stuff for the press. Nobody cares anyway. Wait a minute. Just like before, Mr. Vigilante. You're gonna work for me. What? No! You tell me everything you've been thinking of doing. Let us get some busts. What a flip. I'm letting you loose. I'm letting you loose in the city of New York, man. You report to me, but you can do what you gotta do. By the way, I like that they bring back the original track. That backing track was from the original movie. I love that. You're just going to walk away? Yep. You've caused the press charges. You don't want to do anything? I told you no. Here's my number, in case you should change your mind. Thanks, Mr. He's like, I ain't getting involved with no more females. I'm so sorry, but... You seen the last two movies, lady? Yo, bitch, come hey, here, I want to eat you. Come here, I want to eat you. Come on, you. Come on. Why would you even stop in this part of town, man? Ooh. This guy looks familiar, this old man. I was Charlie's friend. Me too. You must be Paul. I'm Bennett. My wife died. I moved over here. And believe it or not, this is a pretty good neighborhood until it changed. I got a letter from Charlie a few days ago. He was really scared. They didn't like him, the bastards, so they killed him. They hit the old people up here in the projects. Those three. I saw them running away from the building when Charlie got killed. Well, we got hell here. They say it's their turf. Well, he runs the gang. He's the worst. It's been a way. I I kind of do like this premise of the cops finally be like, you know what? Crime is up 11%. This guy gets the job done. Let's hire him under this certain stipulation of you got to report back to me. You got to let us get some arrest. You know what I mean? But do your thing. And also he's living in the same building, the same neighborhood as these creeps, man. Kind of like that. The Giggler. That's his name. He laughs when he runs. Nobody catches him. Were you downstairs last night in the underground garage? Yeah. Oh, thank you. For what? My wife, Maria. She was in the car last night. I'm Rodriguez. We live downstairs. You're a man who doesn't run. Hey, if there's anything I can do to help, huh? Where are you going? You just take it easy, Bennett. This is my problem. Paul Kersey looks more seasoned now. He was definitely, you know, kind of fresh in the first one. He's looking like... I don't know. There's something like a little more. He's like a professional vigilante now. <laughs> You're looking very cool. Okay, this is our cash. What's that for? The new car. That's bait. Hey. What's the problem? Just get out of my f***ing face. Who are you? It's my car. How are you going to die? <laughs> yeah! You don't bring a knife to a gunfight, baby! <laughs> oh, the cops get run out of this neighborhood? You're out of your area. Yeah, this is our turf, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, they don't mess around though. That's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. <laughs> Damn. What? This guy had a plunger. <laughs> Chief, I want some arrests, felony arrests, and a couple of bodies on slabs in the morgue. They can be your guys' bodies or some of that trash up there. Hey, I said, let me five dollars, sucker. Imagine having to deal with this shit. Oh, you got the leather jacket on now. He's ready. <laughs> yeah, right on, man. 
Got to the fan club. You better get some more guns, I'll tell you that. Oh, he's in a home alone, the joint. Ah, uh, took the bait. What is this, man? Hey, hey, get out of my way. I've had enough of you creeps. Oh. Yep, word is spreading about him. What are you doing up here? Looking for you. I told you before, I'm not going to file any charges. Would you like to have dinner? What? Taking a taxi to some place, I think someone might not be to ask them out. But why not? Yeah. Look around. You shouldn't be up here. It's not safe. I mean, in the Death Wish movies, I would say, don't get involved, but, you know, Paul Kersey's been through a lot. Friday? Friday? Friday's good for me. My place. Okay, I take it back. This guy does look creepy. He just doesn't sound that creepy. Come on, mister. You were brandishing a gun. What do you mean, brandishing? Some kids tried to come in my back window. I waved it at him. Can we have the gun? What? Possession is a felony in the city limits. Otherwise, you go to jail. He's in his own place, man. What? Oh, did they buy these cops off? It's our protection. Yeah. Please. Oh my god, this is bullshit. Thanks, mister. I cannot believe that, what I just saw. We'll come in here any time we like. You got that? <laughs> oh, my, I want Paul Kersey to kill all these guys. <laughs> it's 90 degrees outside, and I've had my windows nailed shut. I'll take care of it. Man, I know how that summer heat is, man. We keep the windows open, too. This is the same year as the Night Stalker, too. Oh, I love that he's booby-trapping all their houses. <laughs> Anybody opening the window raises the nail. Oh, there was a nail in that? Or... Oh, it hit him in the mouth! What are those? Teeth. Yo! Okay. That's a win. That is a win. About five foot six. Missing two front teeth. <laughs> Missing two front teeth. Those ain't growing back. There goes the giggler. Well, who's Weldy? You'll see. Weldy, man. I'm trying to remember some of the past characters that are still alive. <laughs> Weldy? Weldy's here. Oh, wait. Is that the gun that he got in the first movie? Fires a 475 Weldy Magnum. But a 475 Weldy Magnum is a shorter version of the African big game cartridge. Damn. Oh, no. Please, no more R-word scenes, man. This is what Death Wish is known for. I get it. No! 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 No, man. Just has a broken arm. I'll take you to the hospital. Come on. To the emergency rooms. Well, Paul Kersey was sending all kind of messages, man. They're sending a message back, unfortunately. Mrs. Rodriguez has expired. What? What? Just like Paul Kersey's wife in the first one. Over the phone, they told me she had just a broken arm. Or broken blood vessels. Some clots came free, and we think 
lodged in the heart. I'm sorry. Oh my, I was not expecting that one. Okay. You better go ape shit with that big gun, man. You've invested so much time into these people now, man. Will D. Say hello to my little friend. You load the shove yourself? Nothing's too good for our friends. Here we go. <laughs> Yo! That put a fucking hole in his ass! Oh my lord, it's the creep that stole my pocketbook three weeks ago! Alright, alright! Imagine, bro. People hate you this much, they celebrate when you get killed. Yeah! <laughs> Time for a little R&R. &R. I don't know anything about you. I was married, but my wife died. Sorry, that was years ago. What about you? I guess that you're afraid to be close to someone again. Oh, maybe. You don't like the kind of work you do. Sometimes I feel like I'm on the wrong side. Defending creeps. Damn it, people have got to start to fight back and hard. The whole thing is just, it's out of balance. Go ahead, speed. Yeah, Cuban's gonna get high, high, high! <sighs> Cuba's gonna kill tonight. <laughs> oh, damn, where did they get all those weapons? I just saw they all had, like, AKs and shit. What? <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Oh, damn, he is screwed. Damn. Oh, is he wearing something? Oh, I was gonna say, why he pulled it out like nothing? Oh, here comes this guy, I'll speed it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a higher fall than I thought. <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> You're not leaving anyone for me to arrest. Is this Mr. Emil? Yes. Hey, it's your wife. I think she needs your help. She's sick or something. You threw one of my boys out of your store last week. It's your wife. She's dying. <laughs> No, man. Oh, man. Well, he was afraid he was going to use them. Said he gave them to me to keep. Well, next time they come around, I've got something for them. Bro, please tell me these are the biggest guns I've ever seen. That's a 30 caliber Browning machine gun. Charlie brought them home from the war. Oh, f yes. I just seen Kelly's Heroes the other day. I know exactly what I'm looking at. You're damn right. You shoot some nice big holes in the sons of bitches. Fuck yeah, tear them apart. All right. I'm leaving the city. What? A couple of weeks with my sister in Binghamton. Oh, it's everything, this place, my job, the people I deal with. Do you still think you don't want to get close to someone? Don't lose 
Be right back. I'm going to pick up my mail. I'll be right here. Oh, bro. They're going to roll up on her. The final look. Come on. Oh, shit. I thought they were going to pull a drive on her, but this is kind of worse. They had to add the explosion to confirm the death. What? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You're pulling out that fucking chopper right now, and you about to. Yeah, buddy. Come on. I'll give you something to screech about, you sons of bitches. Yep. Let's go. I'm angry for you, man. I'm fucking angry for you. Damn you. Where is he? He's not where he should be. Oh, hell yeah. Oh no. No, dude. Oh man. I really got invested with this whole neighborhood and they killed them all off. Listen, Kirsty. I only lost one gun for you there. The other one's still there. Blow this gun away. He had to go someplace. <laughs> he was dressed as that doctor walked right past you. Yeah, Manny Fraker here. Listen, I need some more guys, as many as you can spare me. I need to put some more heat in my area. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! Oh, oh, we're taking you back to the Korean War, baby. And these rounds are self propelled, armor piercing. All I got is a zip gun. Huh. Well, we should get a few of them. Oh, it is about to be on. I am so ready for this, y'all. I am so ready for this! <laughs> Some of the creeps. What? Oh, they are fighting back. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Oh, he's about to be a war zone. Holy shit. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, lit him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Wow. Good thing thugs are lousy shots, huh? Run and hide in alleys and damaged apartment buildings. There are great sheets of flames rising from burning buildings. The fire department is there, but we've had no official word from the police department yet. But we'll be back with news as soon as we can find out. Wow, now we got the cops shooting them out with them. Got him. Damn. Oh man, these cops can't shoot for shit either. These cars blow up so damn easy. You can like spit on that thing and that thing will blow up. <laughs> The neighborhood fights back, man. Taking their guns, too. I was gonna ask, too. Paul Kersey needs to be taking their guns after he kills them. Unlimited ammo, so to speak. Oh my god. Whoa! I forgot about all the booby traps. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, this guy. What the f kind of gun was that? Was that like a shotgun? Oh, he said it was a zip gun, right? I didn't know it shot off like that, though. That's kind of like a shotgun. Ah! Oh, the cop came through. Oh, they're going to tag team this shit? Hell yeah, let's go. They're much better shots, that's why. Uh-oh. Oh. Son of a bitch. God, they love taking women, don't they? You have a revolver, bro. I haven't seen you reload once. <laughs> He's in the tree. <laughs> oh, you walked in the wrong place. <laughs> nice. There you go. That worked. Wildy is done. Oh, yes. Well, now I owe you. Yeah. How bad is it? It's just a nick. Oh. Hey. Bulletproof, asshole. Oh, shit. He has one, too. You can't have both of us. Let me. You want to identify the pieces? <laughs> we give up. We give up. <laughs> Quite a bit. You better get going. <laughs> that cop didn't even seem surprised. <laughs> 
Oh, you just blew this motherfucker away with a missile launcher, so. It'll be after you. <laughs> Tell me to get your ass out of here now. He's like, man, we need you around for the fourth one. Come on. Yo, oh, okay, this third one, man. Oh, man, that was 1985's Death Wish 3. I believe it was 1985. Let's talk about it, y'all. All right, Flix Talkers, once again, Death Wish 3. Man, that was the most fun. You guys were all right. You guys were all right. I already knew it halfway through the movie that I was going to have a, the most enjoyable time with this one. I'm not going to say the stakes were higher because they weren't. They did invest in a lot of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they introduced you to a lot of people that you felt for. A lot of them are older, and I do feel for older people that have to live in shitty situations like that. They don't have a Punisher. They don't have a neighborhood Spider-Man, so to speak. The cops are never helping them out when they need to, and when they get there, it's already too late, right? What the hell do you do? I totally can understand and empathize with anybody's situation like that. So we need a Paul Kersey in our neighborhood, and that's kind of who he's fighting for against the biggest gang i've ever seen in my life on camera like this thing this is not even as big as like the warriors you know and all of those other gangs that were attached this is like bigger than all those combined it was crazy and it was awesome to see all the mayhem that unfolded in that third act my god let's talk about it all right so paul kersey is back y'all charles bronson a few years after the last one that i saw him in death wish 2 which was more dramatic we're obviously building a story off of his daughter and, you know, uh, the death of her and then, you know, him trying to live a, a normal life, so to speak, but then just getting caught up back in it. It started to unfold a little more slowly. With this one, we're just thrown right into it. We know that New York is a shit whole wasteland. It just keeps getting worse, apparently, after each decade. We're in the middle of the 80s, guys. And it's not looking good in this neighborhood, all right? So all it takes is his buddy getting killed for him to be invested once again in something that he said he would never do. <laughs> but of course, we know he's going to jump back in the saddle, right, so to speak. Now, I'd mentioned he looks more seasoned. He looks more professional. And he did. And I like him for that. I'd also mentioned in the past that, you know, his emotion is never there. You guys have let me know in the comment section. He's always kind of been that way, even when it came to the Western movies from, you know, 15 years before this movie you know so i do like that his mannerisms are the same he does have that you know somewhat emotional attachment when it comes to a partner or, or someone a woman that comes into his life at least for the moment you know he shows you know love smiles and you know i think i even saw a tear <laughs> i was like <laughs> paul kersey with a tear in his eye like i didn't never thought i'd see the day but when she blew up in that explosion you know, I did see something in his eyes that was sadness. So that being said, we know if you ever are in a Death Wish movie and you're a lady of Paul Kersey's, you're going to die <laughs> in a horrible way, unfortunately. Now, this hit on all cylinders of, of what you usually get in a Death Wish movie. You get crazy gangs, right? You get a multitude of all these characters in the gang. You had the the giggler. You had the head, you know, honcho, so to speak. You had a couple of other side characters that were trying to be standouts themselves. And they were all scumbags. Uh, you have a cool Paul Kersey, once again, who this time is fighting with the law instead of running, you know, in the shadows, hiding from the law, so to speak. Vigilante. They know of him. I don't think he really followed the rules too much. But the police officer was like, you know what? The, the mayhem is just ensuing. I'm going to help you out here in the third act, all right? We got to do what we got to do. We got to clean up these damn streets. And the only way is to kill as much of these roaches as we can, so to speak. I mean, there was a there was that, re that, that cockroach reference the whole time in this movie, man, that I was like, they're definitely throwing a metaphor in there somewhere. But yeah, once they cut the head off the snake, so to speak, it sent them all running. I had talked about our villain, Fracker, not really liking the way he sounded he did look pretty menacing. He reminded me of either a Rucker Hauer or I totally forget the guy's name. I'll throw him up here on screen. The villain in Cobra. He had that very strong presence, those very crazy, like, drugged out eyes. You know what I mean? He, do he did look scary. He had a crazy haircut. He just didn't sound scary. He sounded like he was, you know, cosplaying a gang member uh, in his free time. And then he's like a, a, a real estate agent by day, you know, on the phone, you know, making calls, so to speak. But he was a fine actor. You know, he was okay. 
went out with a crazy bang, no pun intended. And I like how everything played out for him in the end, you know, because he was a piece of shit. We had a lot of R-word scene, or one R-word scene in this movie, which they didn't show too much of, but once again, it's motivation for, uh, I believe her name was Rita, her husband, I'm not, I've already forgot his name, but for him to join up and help Paul Kersey, and then collectively, the community comes out, and I like that. The community fought back. Everybody pulled out their guns, whatever they could. Some woman pulled out a damn broom, and she pushed the guy out the window. Like, they all fought back because they had him kind of leading the way, leading the charge. This this was my the most fun death wish for sure. <laughs> I didn't think someone the directors or 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 whoever was I don't know if it was the last one I saw that guy Winner I saw his name was uh, attached I forget the his last name was uh, Winner Michael Winner. I don't know if he was yep he did the first uh, I'm sorry he did the last one too. I'm not sure if he's doing the ne the the last one though Death Wish four. But back on this one it felt like he was like you know what. We're just going balls to the wall. We're just going to see bodies hit the floor, so to speak. And I got that. I got so much just action ramped up to the 10th degree, man, in this one. This is what an 80s movie should have felt like. I've seen so many 80s movies that did feel like this, you know? There wasn't that much story structure to it. Yeah, there's a revenge element because of his friend and what, but, but that doesn't, in this one, it's like, <laughs> we're just taking out the scum, taking out the trash. Right. And I like the way it all played out. Once again, I don't have much more to say. The action was great. The weapon choices were fantastic. It's all big guns. And I love that. I love the big guns and the biggest, you know, just to blast this guy. <laughs> that bulletproof vest ain't stopping that. <laughs> I love that. We saw people on fire. Like, it was cool, man. A lot of car explosions. You know what? All that being said, guys, 1985's Death Wish 3 gets a solid 3 out of 5 once again. I think because I'm judging it as a whole. We can't get too serious when we're watching movies like this. So they're going to stay in the above average, just fun, entertaining, beat em up action crime type of movies that you guys all love. I love them as well, but they're not winning any Academy Awards. Let's not kid ourselves, guys. But this is a great, great movie to keep watching i mean death wish one is classic to me death wish two was a great follow-up this one is just one that you throw on like a, a popcorn type movie if you're gonna have fun with some friends a drinking movie that being said you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below please hit that big thumbs up to support the channel consider subscribing today for more i'll catch you on the next one i'm gone peace